Hello. Um, I've also recently just been asked about a video I did a while back, which included some sky replacement, and because it was a panning shot, it also includes some hand tracking that I did in Jashaka. Well, for a while now, I've been trying to figure out the tracking module, and it does track. The problem is, is that there's no way of taking that tracked data and transferring it into any of the other modules, which is a bit of a shame, but the actual tracking module in itself does work. It does track. I've tried it. It's just that once you've tracked the footage, there's no way of actually taking that data and putting it on another layer or whatever. So yeah, a while back I did create a video that had a panning effect with uh, a sky replacement. Uh, someone just asked me if I could do a tutorial for that. Um, so I haven't taken the original video. I've done a new video today. But this is what we'll basically be creating. Now you should, you'll have to excuse the judderiness. The judderiness is simply because I've got so many programs open and my, com especially seeing as my, the, like the screen recording capture software is just using up a load, a load of processing power. So as you can see, it's basically like the back of my house. I've taken off the sky. I've replaced it with this picture that I created, which has been tracked. Now in my original, I hand tracked it and it was really bad. So in this one, I've actually created kind of like a proper workflow to make a bit of a better track. So for this, unfortunately, you, d you need more than Jashaka. You need three different programs. You need Voodoo, which is freely available from the internet. And you need Blender, which again is freely available. Now I understand there is a newer version. Well, I know there's a newer version. I used to have it. Um, I don't have it anymore. Simple reason that I deleted it for because on my computer for some reason it didn't run Python scripts. Uh, this one does, so I, da I actually downgraded a version to 2.49 from the 2.5 version. Uh, you'll understand all that later on if you just give me a second. So basically what I did is I got my source footage, I put it into Jashaka. So here's my source footage if you want to see that. So as you can see the gra the sky is fairly even toned, so it was really easy to cut that out. So if I go back to desktop, there's my source footage. It's in Jashaka. I went to editing. We'll get rid of this. I pulled my source footage down here. And then I clicked on export. Well, what I actually clicked on was export as a JPEG sequence, because unfortunately Voodoo only takes sequences of pictures. So I exported it as a JPEG sequence to my desktop. There we are getting a load, a load of different files. Um, that's <laughs> not the folder, but yeah, there we go. All these different files. And so once these are done, these are in my nice little folder, you open up Voodoo, <coughs> click on File, Open, Sequence. You navigate to the... Uh, now, so select your first file, click on open. Now, mine was a free move, and because I use my DV camcorder, uh, it's interlaced footage. So, if you're uh, guessing if you're using one of the more modern camcorders, I'm not sure, but I think they're non interlaced. But uh, if, especially if it says 720p, that means it's not non interlaced. Mine was interlaced, so I clicked on that. I don't know whether that makes any difference really, up fields, or, but I thought it's better to put it as interlaced <laughs> rather than non interlaced. You then click on OK. And it pops up. Then you click on track. And it'll track. Now it'll take a while. Now if you notice when you've opened up Voodoo, you get these two dialog boxes. So this dialog box. And it's going through every single frame. So I'm not going to do that right now because I've already done that. So I'm going to click on stop tracking. But once it's all run all its way through, you have to wait for it to run all the way through. Click on file, save, blender python script. Then navigate to wherever you want to save it. Type in whatever you want to save it as. And then if you've got Blender 2.5, or you select Blender 2.5. If you've got Blender 2.4 or lower, <laughs> select Blender 2.4. I've got Blender 2.49, so that's the one I selected. And then just click out Save. So once you've got that, you now go into Blender. 
So we open up the Blender screen now. Uh, the if you have two point five, don't worry because it's pretty much the same. I know there's an extra dialog box here, but it's actually pretty much all the same really, and we don't really use the dialog box that much. So if you click down here, which you'll see in Blender, Blender two point five as well, you've got three D view, timeline view, all these different views. Click on text editor. Click on text. Open. Navigate to wherever you stored your Python file. So for me, it was full track py on my desktop. So now you can see it's up here. I click on open text file. So now you have all these beautiful, whatever it is, vertices, information. Click on go back down to where it said text and click on run Python script. Looks like nothing's happened, but something has actually happened. If you click back to where we changed it to the text editor, Go back to 3D view, as you can see now, you've got a bunch of points all sticking around, seeming to do something. And if we go in and select go view, click on camera, and then down here what we'll do is we'll click on timeline, press play. As you can see, so there, I actually recognize that, that's my chimney. <laughs> so that's where it's tracked, and I can see that actually that looks about like what I did track it as so there's two walls here because obviously the way of my house is modeled so what I then did is a uh, I created a plane add mesh plane I rotated it moved it back in Z space and then I severely enlarged it this thing lets me do it so now when you go back to view camera see this huge ass thing now if you click on play basically what you want it to do is none of these to go outside the bounds of the plane and it doesn't which is nice so now you don't need those points anymore those points really are just there for show so what we're actually going to do is that uh, if you go here and you middle click your mouse button click on split areas you can actually s add on an extra area. We're going to create, click on Outliner, go down to Voodoo Scene, run FP3 Cloud, click there. Then you can't see in your, if you click on the eye, then you can't see in your viewport. And if you click on that render button next to it, it won't render out either, so you'll have a nice clean plate. Now, if you go back down there and you click on uh, UV Image Editor, now go back, select your plane, go into texture paint mode, click on tab. That now means that this UV editor, whatever happens here, will happen here. Click on image, open, and then find your image. So the image I'm going to use is just this sky image that I created a bit earlier on by mashing together a bunch of different images. So I think that looks pretty good. And uh, then go back here on textured now down here when I change it to timeline click there and click on button window then go to the shaders which I understand the shortcut is F5 if I remember rightly so that's that button click on add new and that's a new material uh, I just got this off the internet just now this is how to do it on text space and shaderless basically what this means is that if you have anything in your scene it won't actually affect this picture so if you had like a light or anything it won't actually affect the luminosity of this picture. So if you want to see what it looks like, that's what it's, your camera is seeing right now. So what you do is now you, we go into the render settings, which uh, da, 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 da. so as you can see, you just click on scene. Get one of the big things that you need to do, especially with motion tracking, is put your render settings exactly as they were for your original video because the original video is the one that was tracked. So mine was 720 by 5, 6, 7, 6. 
So, uh... Change the JPEG. Now, if you're going into Dusharka, it's best to put an AVI codec and then put it on as DivX. For some, I tried the uncompressed, didn't work. I tried a couple of others, un didn't work. So, but then I tried the DivX one, seeing as there's a DivX option on in Dusharka itself, and it actually worked. Then down here, you want to put change that to whatever the length of your track is. So for me, it's actually 200. Right, now what you want to do now is if you come over to the left here, it says there's a little button here that says temp and back buff. Now if you click on that temp one, click, and then what you, basically what you want to do is change that to the direct directory in which you want your video to appear. So you click on users, or click on has, and then desktop. And that's it. And click on select output pictures. Now that means that anything that gets rendered will go to the desktop. And that's where I want it. So then after that, you just click on anim. So wait, I'll just rename this because, uh, sorry. So once you've done that, you click on Anim and it'll render it out. And hopefully you'll end up getting a video not unlike this. So as you can see, it's basically the movement, but this picture is there's a camera moving around with a picture in front of it, and so it looks like that. So now we've got most of the things together. We bring them into Jashaka. And as you can see, I've got something open already, but what I'll do is actually I'll clear the scene. Reset it all. So as you can see, I've got my original footage, and I've got my footage that moves around and has been tracked. So we're going to go into the animation module. Add two layers. I don't know why I don't use the bottom layer, but it's one of the it's just become a force of habit now. So on the top layer, we're going to add out the footage we're going to key out. And on the bottom layer, we're going to add on the footage we've tracked. Now to I think I've mentioned this before to key out in Jashaka, there's a bit of a long-winded process because there's no color pick tool in the animation module. So if you click on desktop, key up. This is how I do it, that is. Um, and you bring your sky replacement thing in. What you do is, you get your dropper tool. Don't bring it over here. Bring it over to the left here, where this little thing is. And click there. Then, click on Axis, and it gives you values. 191, 142, 142, 256, 256, 256. Remember them. Come over here, into your layers, click on CPU effect, chroma key, and go to controls, 191, 142, and I've just realized I'm clicking on chroma key, 191, 142, and these are all 256. As you can see, it's keyed out actually almost perfectly. But as you, over time, the key comes back in. Not a problem. Go back to the front, click this button here, plus button. There we go. That's captured that. Now, when we come down to here, what we're going to do is we're going to change this by just decreasing our values basically by increasing this range we can get a fairly clean plate I have to say that's actually a pretty good plate <laughs> Alright, now we've got a bit of a weird thing going on here. Basically, I'm just going to increase this blue low because we don't need that, that much. I just, this this was just tinkering. I found that I didn't need it that much. With that, and. Yeah. 
there you go I, I have to say that's quite a clean plate even if I do say so myself so as you can see in the background our background is moving it might not look the best right now because my phone's a bit my my, my uh, the program's a bit choppy but I can assure you it's moving in sync with each other so the second thing I then did was I applied a bit of color correction to this so I click on layer layers colorize I increased the blue quite a bit decrease the red decrease the green increase the gamma decrease this thing that says value on it I don't actually know what it does but uh, works for me and that gives it that blue tint which makes you think it's night time I added a bit of a blue tint to the layer underneath as well so click on color controls blue and hey ho now it looks like a, well it looks a lot different to what it does up there you can tell it looks a lot more convincing that you probably took this in the early evening well early night time late evening and that you could see Jupiter from behind you I know it's not the best picture but you can see where the possibilities can come now you can get videos of jets flying overhead and they'd be orientated as the video is or even if you're because you're using blender 3d you can do a full 3d effect with like 3d jets going over it so i hope people can see that especially with free programs it's best to utilize three or four programs in cohort with each other to produce an effect rather than expecting one program to be able to do it because unfortunately creating a program is a lot of hard work and especially for someone who's doing it for free at the end of the day there's a load of different programs out there which are free which are really really good and if we use them all together they're actually just as good if they can actually be just as good as some of the top high-end professional programs out there so yeah thank you very much for watching but that is how you do basic tracking and sky replacement in Jashaka thank you